Psalm 139 is an exploration of God's omnipresence. However, reading between the lines, the psalmist may not be entirely happy that God sees everything he does and knows everything he's thinking about. He says, You hem me in, behind and before. Where can I flee from your presence? Although the psalmist also praises God's omnipresence as wonderful and precious. Years ago, if a five-year-old asked, Where does God live? Their parents may well have answered, Up there! Today, they're more likely to say, in his own dimension. This apparently facile answer might have some truth to it. It is likely that this universe has more dimensions than we can perceive, and one of them is literally everywhere. These extra dimensions are predicted by string theory. This branch of theoretical physics attempts to combine the mathematics of quantum physics, which successfully describes the movement of subatomic particles, with general relativity, which successfully links gravity with everything else. In order to encompass both of these, string theory proposes that, as well as the dimensions of time and the three dimensions of space that we're all aware of, there are other dimensions we can't perceive. String theory may sound strange, but it's been impressively successful in explaining a few areas we would otherwise not understand. For example, it helps to explain how condensed matter works in superconductors. This suggests that string theory isn't just a mathematical curiosity, but it might actually represent reality. In 1995, Edward Witten united five separate string theories by the addition of an eleventh dimension, which he labelled M for mystery. This was the start of M theory, which it is hoped will one day become a theory of everything. That is, it will accurately describe the movements and interactions of all types of matter and energy from the astronomical to the subatomic scale. Now, the obvious question is, why can't we perceive these additional dimensions? We don't yet know the answer, but the most likely one is that their area of influence is too small. For example, if you look at a cable from a distance, it appears to be a one-dimensional line, and you only discover it has height and depth when you get closer. But what has all this got to do with where God lives? The key lies in a unique property of the 11th dimension, also known as M-space. That is, it's in touch with every particle in the universe so it literally extends everywhere. If God were able to traverse the M dimension, he would be in touch with literally every particle in the universe at the same time. This means he's closer to each of us than we are to our own skin. I'm not suggesting that this is definitely how God's omnipresence and omniscience works in practice in our universe. We don't yet know whether there is a Nen dimension, and if there is, whether God actually does traverse it. The significant point is that it could allow us to describe these characteristics of God in a way that remains consistent with modern physics. More importantly, M-theory also gives us valuable insights into what omnipresence could mean. We don't have to accept either the Buddhist concept that God is omnipresent because we live inside him, or the pantheist concept that God is omnipresent because he infuses everything. M-theory provides a way that a holy God 
can be intimately in touch with the whole of his creation while also remaining entirely separate from it. When we accept Jesus' forgiveness of sins, God can live inside us by his Holy Spirit. But even before that, he can know about everything inside our body, every chemical reaction, and be alongside every atom without ever being part of us. But this still doesn't remove the ambivalence in my mind about whether God's constant eye on me is comforting or disconcerting. God bless.